Greetings, one and all two universes! In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to find out who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or with a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Larry Boy, the Cucumber of Steel, and Spongebob Squarepants, are you ready kids? This will be quite an unusual battle, but as a Christian boy born in the late 90s who grew up in the early 2000s with Nickelodeon, I can assure you that both of these characters are in good hands. So let's see who's gonna win. This is Universes. On the kitchen counter of who knows where, Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber host a show for the children of the world, teaching them lessons about God. I just hope whoever owns the house that that kitchen counter is in doesn't wake up and get hungry. <gasps> Maybe that explains the ugly Netflix reboot. They had to find horrific replacements for our eaten heroes. But hey, that's just a theory. A universe's theory. Thanks for watching. Anyways, back to the bio. Larry the Cucumber is a bit more than he seems at first. Behind that goofy grin is a superhero, a cucumber of steel who lives in a cave with a butler and swings around the city. So wait, is he a parody of Superman, Batman, or Spider-Man? If it's a clever combination of all three, I'm actually very impressed. But parody skills aren't going to get you a win in universes, so let's see what this purple and yellow super fellow can do. Well first, there's something all these veggies can do, superhero suit or not. Despite having no hands, they can grab, hold, or throw items. My conclusion? Short range telekinesis. Ah, well that was a time waster. On to the hero stuff. Now it's pretty obvious Larry Boy's most outstanding features are the two gigantic plungers sticking out of his non-existent ears. These aren't just for decoration though, he can shoot them out with ropes to swing across the city or use them as grappling hooks to scale buildings and catch criminals. They can extend pretty far, bounce off walls, and wrap around villains to tie them up. Larry Boy also has a utility belt. I have no idea how he fits all this stuff in there, but he has several tools at his disposal. He has a saw in there, a fan, a lawn chair. Don't worry, he has useful stuff too. For example, he has a snorkel that lets him breathe underwater, that'll definitely help him fight our porous pal, and a superheater with a setting labeled as boiling lava which typically can reach temperatures of over 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Hyperbole! Now in verses, size doesn't matter when it comes to who someone can beat, as Superman can mop the floor with King Kong who's hundreds of times larger. But size can still affect stats in both good and bad ways. Let's start with the bad. Larry Boy was able to survive an explosion that covered an entire amusement park, and he's on par with Lemon Twist an Electromelon who also destroyed an entire amusement park. Pretty good feats, huh? But when you remember Larry Boy is a cucumber, meaning he's only about 9 inches tall, we have to scale the amusement park down as well. Meaning the destruction of this amusement park when compared to Larry Boy's size amounts to only about wall level. His size is good for speed though, as Larry Boy was able to dodge a generic laser beam which hits hypersonic speeds at the lowest at around 3500 miles per hour. Now, if he were human sized, Larry will be dodging this beam from several feet away, giving him a pretty decent speed feat. But since Larry is tiny veggie sized, this is all happening mere inches away, giving Larry Boy less than a millisecond to react to something traveling over 3500 miles per hour, making him 20 times faster than light. So eat your veggies kids before they hop away at light speed. That is the weirdest sentence I've ever said. On to Spongebob. Alright everyone, go see Alfred about some cake. <laughs> Don't sing the theme song, don't sing the theme song, don't sing the theme song. Oh no! Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants! Okay, okay, enough! Ahem, this dorky porous square lives in a small town called Bikini Bottom with his two best friends, Patrick and Squidward. If you can call him a friend. <laughs> ah, cringe. 
SpongeBob takes care of his pet snail Gary and works as a fry cook at the Krusty Krab, making delicious Krabby Patties with a secret formula that's constantly under the threat of being stolen by the villainous Plankton. And yes, I am doing nothing but describing the character to fill up the bio section since he has no backstory to discuss. SpongeBob enjoys spending his free time jelly fishing, watching Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, and practicing karate with Sandy Cheeks. But everyone knows who SpongeBob is already, so this whole section had no point. <laughs> well, his biology itself is already impressive enough. As a sponge, SpongeBob is hydrodynamically designed and can move underwater with absolute ease. SpongeBob's plush, absorbent body also allows him to take hefty blows without receiving too much damage. But when he does take damage, he can easily recover with his insane regeneration, which I'll get more into later on. With his mushy body, he can also shapeshift and change height. As I've also mentioned before, SpongeBob is a master of karate. Sure, he's a goofball and not quite on the level of Sandy Cheeks, but that doesn't mean he's terrible. He's demonstrated some pretty impressive skills. And again, as I've also mentioned before, SpongeBob is a fry cook and as such carries around a spatula that he sometimes takes into combat, substituting for a sword. And it's actually quite successful in doing that. Last but not least, SpongeBob has a secret superhero side known as the Quickster, granting him the ability to run really... Quick! Yeah, you may think this little square dude doesn't seem like much, but he's done some neato stuff. SpongeBob's regeneration that I mentioned before is absolutely ridiculous. He can regrow arms as soon as he removes them, pull himself back together after being diced into cubes, he can reform after melting into a puddle, crumbling into dust, or even being torn to shreds until only a few strands of him are left. Though, he does appear to be weak to educational television. But don't let that make you think he goes down easy as he survived the complete destruction of Bikini Bottom. But of course, he falls victim to the same size issue as Larry Boy. SpongeBob is barely 4 inches tall, so the entire town of Bikini Bottom compared to his size is also only around wall level. Luckily, he picks it up in the speed category though. As the Quickster, SpongeBob can run fast enough to create after images, and he can travel 3.8 meters to a mountain of brain coral and back faster than the human eye can track, giving him subsonic speeds. Pretty impressive, but is it enough? Will Larry Boy have a new sponge to clean the kitchen counters with, or will SpongeBob have a new pickle to serve in a Krabby Patty? Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Manager, this is the greatest day of my life! Ocean Man, take me by the hand, lead me to the land that you understand. Hey, what's up, guys? Corn O'Keefe here, bringing you another universe's prediction. We got SpongeBob SquarePants versus Larry Boy, aka Larry the Cucumber from VeggieTales. Now, this is an interesting development. I gotta go with SpongeBob, though, all the way, folks. You know, Larry Boy does face off against some pretty deadly foes and weeds. These weeds are actually capable of busting concrete and sidewalks. But SpongeBob may seem weak in his quote unquote base form, but he can go to his invincible bubble form, able to bend pure steel. On top of that, he has his Toon Force, which is inconsistent, has its limits, but it's crazy nonetheless. He has his crazy regeneration power. You could argue Larry has more experience as a quote-unquote superhero, but I feel SpongeBob has a major, major speed advantage. Regeneration on top of the Toon Force, the Invincible Bubble form, all that good stuff. Let me know what you think down below. i got to go with SpongeBob SquarePants all the way. It's an interesting and a cool idea. Peace. What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, we only had about one prediction that was one minute long. <laughs> I mean, we had multiple predictions, but uh, they were all like seven minutes and ten minutes, it was crazy. I didn't know people would get so into Spongebob vs. Larry Boy. I just thought it would be like a fun little interesting matchup to do from the outside, because no one ever thought of doing it before. And it was actually a very interesting matchup, so I was like, you know what, yeah, let's do this, this will be fun. But people are like, people are going ham on this. <laughs> I think it's great, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, since we only had like one one-minute prediction, and this whole prediction segment will end up being kind of short, I figured I'd toss in a little stuff to say myself in the predictions. Um, check out my Discord! Yep, another Discord plug. Enjoy it. But in all seriousness, guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far, and I hope you enjoy the results. So let's get into it, because I think they're almost done calculating. And the results are in. The winner is... Larry Boy! This was almost a tie. You don't even know, man. This is by far the hardest matchup I've ever had to figure out the winner for. So first, I'll speak as if it was a tie, and then I'll let you know what changed everything. 
Both Larry Boy and SpongeBob had insane advantages that were able to counter each other. For example, Larry Boy's faster than light speeds allows him to absolutely blitz Subsonic SpongeBob. But speed alone isn't going to win him the fight as SpongeBob's regeneration is just too crazy. No matter how fast Larry Boy is, he doesn't have any way to physically harm SpongeBob beyond the point of crumbling him into dust, which SpongeBob has already shown the ability to recover from before. And as for SpongeBob's side, he has the durability and resistance to withstand Larry Boy's strength, but not his own strength that's powerful enough to do any damage to Larry Boy in return. It just seemed like an endless loop of Larry Boy having the power and resources to outmatch SpongeBob and knock him down, while SpongeBob had the resources to get back up every single time. It was all because of that darn regeneration. It was just too good. I was about to call it a tie. But then I asked myself, is there a way to defeat SpongeBob where regeneration isn't the solution? And the answer is yes! This is where the tiebreaker comes in. I'll give you three seconds to guess. One, two, three, times up. The answer is heat! Heat, heat, heat. This doesn't require SpongeBob to be squashed, sliced, or ground up to a point he can easily recover from. Just get him a little toasty and he's out of commission. And if you recall correctly from Larry Boy's analysis, he has a superheater that can reach a setting of boiling lava. Now obviously this is complete hyperbole and can't actually reach the temperatures of lava, but with how quickly it was able to melt a thick wall of ice, he'd have SpongeBob turned into ashes in no time. SpongeBob dried out after several minutes in ordinary air, and after just a few seconds under an ordinary lamp, he couldn't even move. And in both these situations, SpongeBob would have stayed dead if it weren't for an outside source rehydrating him. And in universes, no outside sources allowed. With Larry Boy's speed advantage and this insane heater of his, he'd be able to catch the sponge off guard and melt him down in the blink of an eye. Not to mention SpongeBob's weak to educational television anyway, so Larry's got him cornered. And come on, guys, Larry Boy's a good Christian, and SpongeBob, well, He's just a happy guy. Would they really fight and hurt each other? But anyways, for Sponge Fry Cook who spends all of his time in the kitchen, he sure can't take the heat. The winner is... Larry Boy! Glad to be a service! And remember, God wants us to be nice to people! Get ready for the next battle! One shudders to imagine what inhuman thoughts lie behind that mask. What dreams of chronic can sustain cruelty? <laughs> Break here, the butter. I'm gonna make you.